Hi, everybody. <laughs> so in a second here, I'm going to talk about Biotar. There we go. So our intro is perfect because this is South America. Uh, we're starting out in the Amazon basin. They see that you barely see it, but there are these light soils there. They don't really grow anything. The dark ones have charcoal, biochar, in them, along with some fertilizer, some compost, some nutrients, and they grow amazing plants. So biochar is kind of a brand name. What is it? It's just charcoal. It's just made like any other charcoal. It's got some rules. It's got to be made out of a sustainable feedstock, so wood, um, straws, manures, some types of waste paper are clean enough to be used as charcoal. Um, the point is it's not food and we're not growing it for biochar. We pyrolyze it. These machines are so cool. They heat it up in a low oxygen environment so we get that good stable char out of it and, and they're just really neat. You get a whole lot of waste heat from it. It's cool. Um, so what is stable char? Well, charcoal, when you pyrolyze it the right way, makes these nice, beautiful lattice crystals, and they do it in the shape of the original material. So this is graphene. It's stable for like a thousand years, and it's got these pores and micropores that hold air and water and nutrients, and it makes a perfect environment for microorganisms. So why is that cool? Well, plants love this stuff. This is how much plants love it. That bok choy is as big as my head. These are root system from a one-year plant. This is unbelievable. You give this stuff to people who know how to grow plants and they get these really unbelievable results. This is one of my favorites. This is a biodiesel project in Oahu. Um, the only difference between these two is one's grown with biochar plus compost. They got six times the yield of the control. It's just amazing. So how does that work? Well, when we're fixing that carbon, that stable graphite, graphene, we're returning that carbon from the atmosphere back into the soil. And if we do it the right way, it's carbon negative technology. This is how we're going to figure out whether we did it right or not. Lots of math and accounting. And these are the guys figuring it out. So plug them. They're doing a lot of hard work. Um, so it's carbon negative. Will it save the planet? CNN wants to know, New York Times, all these guys, right? So to really get to the root of that, we have to look at our total US energy picture, and it's kind of a bummer. There's our carbon positives at the top, the black stuff. This green line, that's our renewables. That arrow, that's biochar. It's not going to balance out the top stuff. Um, so we need to use this technology strategically, take advantage of the strengths, and get the best possible value of out of it. Um, it's important, so that's why I wrote it on the slide. Um, so I'm going to give you some examples. <laughs> We're going to use it strategically. We're going to use it with high-value crops um, to this year's study with blueberries, better yield, better plant health, you know, better quality blueberries overall, and that fertilizer that they put on there was trapped in with the blueberries, so it didn't go in the water systems. Biochar also sticks to carb um, copper and zinc. Those copper and zinc hit hurt fish, so we can improve our stormwater systems just by adding 10% biochar. We can get that biochar from something like this. Chicken poop. Chicken poop. <laughs> this machine turns chicken poop into sterile bedding and biochar. So the farmer has co-product. They can clean up their farm and remediate areas like this. This is the Hope, Far Hope Mine Project. These are mine tailings, toxic tailings. We put biochar on it. We put compost, native seeds. One year later, it's restored. Um, another good type of project is to put a renewable energy system near where there's forest thinnings. We can convert schools, hospitals to renewable energy systems. They can have biochar as a co-product and help pay off the system. This is an example of this. Um, that's sustainably harvested forestry wood. They're using a gas fire system, capturing the heat for their greenhouse, able to use the biochar. 
and they're growing trees, literally trees to go and plant in the forest. So you can tell I'm excited about this stuff, love it, encourage you to find out more about it. Thanks, it's been great.